Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another Founders for Schools keynote speaker event. Having an insight into our careers from our high key speakers. Today, I would like to welcome Ian Funnell. Um, he is a Chief Executive Officer of Hitachi ABB Power Grids. And Ian, it is great to have you here today, and I'm very excited um, to hear all about your career. Ian has had a long and very um, diverse career in the global energy sector, so we're going to learn a lot about um, global energy today. He is globally very experienced in the energy and automation industry, and he has had a lot of experience in the UK and across the international power sectors, global oil and gas, and the digital industries alike. Hitachi ABB Power Grid is actually a global Technology, technology leader, and it employs 36,000 people across 90 countries. So a really, really big organization. Um, Hitachi ABB Power Grid is actually headquartered in Switzerland, so it's an international organization, and I am very eager to hear all about it. For everybody who is on the call today, please, you will not be seen on the speaker. We will not be able to talk actively out of safeguarding purposes and safeguarding reasons, but please do engage very actively across our question and answer function. Listen very carefully to what Ian has to say about his career and how he got there and how, what kind of skills kind of brought him to where he is today and ask your questions afterwards. Ian will be speaking for around 10 minutes to introduce himself and to share a small and short video with you so that you can actually understand what energy and oil and what ABB, Hitachi ABB is all about. And then I will open the floor to all of you to ask your questions and to learn more and gain more insights about Ian, his career and his industry. Ian, welcome to you over to you. And I know Ian, you would like to start your session today with a video about your organization thank you so let's let's have a look into that and then i'm eager to hear all about you welcome this planet gives us life a journey to fulfill future and we all began that journey somewhere for hitachi and abb power grids our legacies are interlinked from our humble beginnings in the copper mine industry over 100 years ago, both companies have grown globally, diversifying our lines of business and both contributing to society with new technologies. This is the power that brought us together. And together, we can reduce our impact on the planet by bringing sustainable energy to more people. The challenge is laid out before us. It requires the vision to foresee a stronger, smarter, and greener grid, and the dedication to increase quality of life through digital innovation. Bringing social innovation to every corner of the globe. To make this happen, we advance collaborative creation with our customers, academics, and governments. Together, we can encourage the next innovation. Only through co-creation and cutting edge digital solutions can we create new customer values to make life on this planet better for everyone. Together, powering good for sustainable energy. Thank you for that. Um, so Ian, all, over to you. I think you would like to talk to a couple of slides, don't you? So well, good afternoon, everybody. I, um, I'm delighted to be here. It's, it's, it's a fantastic opportunity to, you know, just, just to talk about my career, which I have to say I don't do a lot these days. But so it, it's, it's, um, it's challenged me to think about the key aspects of my career because I work for a global organization now, but I have to say it never started that way. Uh, for, me, for me, it started with a dream, I suppose, or, or maybe an interest more than anything else. I, I just, I loved to make things. I just liked to do stuff and, and to make things. And, and I guess my challenge to you is, you know, what are your dreams? Um, in, in the energy sector, in that video, you know, we, we showed things like, you know, climate change, or maybe, maybe your dream is 
that there is no climate change, that we've solved that problem, or that there is energy for everyone, or, or it's just renewable energy, a bit like the picture there. So I, 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 I started uh, wanting to make things. And when I went to school, my first choice, I suppose, was, was to choose the subjects that were to shape my career. And that's the sort of STEM subjects. It's mass engineering, chemistry, physics. I mean, I loved chemistry. Uh, I, uh, I'll come back to the chemistry story, but I, I just, I love to do that sort of thing. And, and, and I, I, to be honest, I didn't like the chemistry teacher very much, but, but I felt I was good at chemistry. So I continued that all the way through to, to, to A-level. And, uh, and then I decided to, to, to go to university and I went to Aberdeen University. They, they've got quite a big engineering department. And, and I, you know, you just turn up at these things. You, you don't really plan your career at that stage. And I turned up at Aberdeen University and I, you know, you go through your subject choices. And I remember sitting down with, with one of the professors and I said, uh, he said, what, 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 what do you want to do? And I said, well, you know, I've decided I want to do chemical engineering. So uh, unfortunately, that was a bit of a disappointment because he said, actually, we don't do chemical engineering here. Um, and so I said, well, what do you do? So I, I eventually chose electrical engineering. That, that was my, I suppose, my second choice. So it was a bit of a disappointment. And I didn't do my research very well, obviously, uh, and just ended up uh, choosing a subject that, that was probably at that stage my second choice. And, and it was my second choice because in Aberdeen in those days, the oil industry was absolutely booming. And, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed, I have to say, both the school and, uh, and university uh, careers. But I've always wanted to do things differently sometimes. Uh, my career was, nobody in my family had ever done this. Nobody had ever been doing engineering of any shape or form. They, they were completely different to that. And, and my grandparents were, were, were farmers. You know? So it, it, was, it was a complete, um, a completely different choice. And, and that difference sort of inspired me. I was quite interested in doing stuff that was, that was going to be different. And, and then when I ultimately graduated, um, all my colleagues, almost all my colleagues went into the oil and gas industry and I decided not to. Uh, I wanted to, I still wanted to make things and I didn't want to follow, you know, the, the norms and, 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 and all my mates. And I, I chose a completely different career. So I went, I went into, um, you know, electricity supply. I, I went into that, that, that part of the energy business. And I had to say it was hugely rewarding, partly because you could work outside and, and construct things. And that was back to my roots, I suppose, of wanting to do stuff and build things. Uh, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. And then, of course, you, you, you get to a point in your career where I think you say, well, you know, what else do you want to do? And, and which company do you want to join? And, you know, and these days, I think that the choice of company is so important. And the, the, the choice that I made w w was really good. But one of, the, one of the interview questions was, you know, what about training and development? And that wasn't a question from the company to me. That was a question from me to the company. How are you going to uh, train and develop me so that I can, you know, fulfill my career aspirations? And, and you, you are all extremely valuable commodities. You know, it, it's so important that, that the, the companies recognize the diversity in terms of uh, whether it's, you know, girls doing engineering or boys doing engineering or, you know, eth ethnic differences. It, it's so important to try and get a balance of diverse skills uh, into, into business these days at all levels, whether it's a technical or non-technical level. And I think the training schemes that, that are being offered now are, are way more sophisticated than, than they were in my time. But I first started, and the windmills behind me in that picture are, are modern ones. But if, if I can have the next slide, please. Ah, right. Yes, next slide, fantastic. So the, the windmills, when I first started, the windmills were almost exclusively, on all the developmental ones, were in Orkney, in, in the Northern Isles of Scotland. Why? Because it's windy up there. Uh, there's, there's no other resource, it's windy. 
And, and, and that square looking windmill was at the time the world's largest. And it produced in one year more power than any other windmill on the planet. And it was a fantastic experiment. It's a tiny thing really by today's standards, but that, that was really the first large scale windmill ever produced. And so, and so me traveling to the, the, the farther reaches of, of the north of Scotland and beyond was, was so interesting in terms of having a, a, you know, an outdoor engineering job. And I thoroughly enjoyed the engineering part of this. If we can go to the next slide, please. But my career then took a completely different turn almost. And here there, there is a, there's a picture of, of just one of the very old um, uh, oil pumping machines in Borneo in, in, in Southeast Asia. And, and so, so it, it, you know, energy can be, can be anything and everything to do with oil and gas or heating or electricity or any of these sorts of things. And I found that diversity uh, of, of, of engineering challenges really interesting. And that's the sort of thing that has always motivated me. But by the time I got to that stage in my career, I suppose, I wanted to, I wanted to progress. I, 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 you know, what, what, is, what is it about working in business that, that really engages me now? And particularly with that global business that, 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 that I described earlier. It's, it's all, for me, it's all about people. It's not about building things anymore. But it is. It's about building teams. It's about building successful teams. It's about, it's about building people's careers. It's about motivating and encouraging them, mentoring them. And perhaps that's one of the things I guess I would advise everybody is to have, have go and find a mentor. Go and find somebody who can, who can develop your interest, understand your interest, and point you in the right direction. I think for me that was so valuable and just it was it was it it sort of was pivotal in terms of the way that the that my career choices were made so when i started local in in, in the north of scotland i ended up global traveling the world to all sorts of far-flung places like like borneo and beyond and i just i felt that that was just so very interesting and that that part of the energy piece which for me is is one of the most interesting sectors to be in at the moment. Why? It's, it's easy. Why? It's because we're trying to decarbonize the whole energy sector. And that's one of the biggest challenges that we have on this planet today. And I am so happy and delighted to be part of that, uh, a small cog in, in such a big wheel. It's, it's, it's just one of the biggest challenges that we have in terms of stopping uh, global warming. And I think energy these days is, is moving from the windmills and, and the nodding donkeys there in Borneo to the next slide, please. Something that is a, a much more modern, much more digital. Uh, and this is something that we've built down in London at the Imperial College in London. It's a digital energy demonstrator. And it shows all the stuff you can do in software and automation and control of the systems. And, and, I, and we, we're working with, with, with the team down at Imperial College uh, and they, they are training, uh, they're using this facility to, to train all their, all their engineering teams on, on how to digitize the network, how to write software for all these things. And this is, this, is the, this is the future. The previous slides were very much of the past, if you like, and this is very much energy of the future. So I think, I think from very humble beginnings for me to, to get to the stage that I am now, I take opportunities, I love diversity, I will move to where the jobs are and perhaps that's important too. And I think in, in the world today of training and development, I, I have been in about three or four different careers. I guess you guys, when you get into to business, and into a workplace, whatever that looks like. You might have more than that. You might have five or six. So I think training and development, continuous training and development, keeping yourself fresh, making sure that it's not just the technical skills. Companies like ours are looking for leadership, teamworking, 
all the sort of softer skills these days, those are the ones that are much more important. And I would just encourage everybody to grab every opportunity that they can. And, and listen, if the opportunity doesn't work out, like my chemistry degree never turned out to be a chemistry degree. It turned out to be an engineering one. So what? You just got to roll with the punches sometimes. And I very much enjoyed that. And I look forward very much to your, to your questions. So maybe if I can uh, go to the last slide, which is just, just the brand of the company, which is obviously Japanese owned now. Uh, and that's only of uh, 13 days ago. Um, but but it, it's so lots of things change and, and it's a very, very, very interesting place to be. Thank you so much. So we'll go back to the full screen, I think. Yes, please. Thank you so much, Ian. That was a really nice um, journey through your um, career and through your life. Um, so really, really insightful. And actually, I, before, if, if I may just invite the audience now, so you can ask your questions now, put them into the question and answer section. And I'm very happy to go through um, to make sure that we can answer as many as possible within the, in the time given. Before I go to your answers, I actually, you, you triggered a, a, a nice answer for me, Ian. Um, you started off with saying, well, you wanted to study chemical engineering and then you ended up doing electronic and um, electric engineering yes. can i just ask did you at the time know the difference between the two and how come chemical engineering you know many people think engineering and there's only one path to engineering so what is the difference between chemical and electrical engineering and does it make a real big difference to study one or the other well i, I suppose i suppose it does in terms of the of the sort of job that you're likely to get at the end of the day i mean you, you know uh, degrees are, are important when you're getting your first job or your second job uh, and they become less important I think as you as you progress through through your career I mean no, nobody interviews me now uh, based on the job or based on the degree I did you know you know at university that, that just doesn't happen it's much more about the the personal attributes that, that, that you have so it would have it would have it would have shaped my career slightly differently perhaps um, but, it, but, but for me, it was about, I wanted to do something that was really interesting. And, and, and as I say, I didn't particularly like my chemistry teacher at school. So he, he sort of put me off, but, but, but I, got, I got my best grades in chemistry. So I thought, right, well, if, if that's my best grades, I better, I better pursue that. And, and that, that's why I tried to do chemical engineering. But as I say, I went to university, I was you know, a student, I was unprepared. You know, I didn't do my homework. So you know, I ended up doing something different. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so when you chose, I have actually a question from the audience relating to that, um, quite interesting. So they, the, the question is, did you, when you then chose electric engineering, did you then actually get your head around it and you really wanted to do it? Or did you at the time just choose it because there was nothing else to do instead? No, I did. I did. I did choose it. It, it was, um, uh, Aberdeen did a sort of what they call an engineering science degree. So, so you, you could actually try a lot of subjects. Uh, obviously, chemistry wasn't one of them. But you could try a lot of subjects for the first couple of years and then you could choose what you wanted to do. So you could be a structural engineer or a mechanical engineer, or electrical engineer. Uh, and so and was electrical engineering was the thing that really um, just really interested me after after a couple of years. So so it was quite I like to have options open. I never like to close doors. So, you know, so for me, having choices is always important. And, and, and if you're fortunate enough to have choices, then I think that that's a great thing to do because you can then weigh up the, you know, you know, the benefits of, of one choice versus another choice. Okay. Um, you also said in your, in your um, speech before, and you said, well, you know, leadership skills are now really important and a diverse set of skills actually um, beyond just the, just the degree in its own right. Um, so when you talk about skills, what, what suggestion would you give to young people how they could acquire those leadership skills to evidence them? Because it's always easy to say for an organization, oh, we need leadership skills, but when they leave school or when students leave university, you know, they, they ne didn't necessarily have all that experience to evidence. So what, would, what is your suggestion? How can they get the so necessary skills you're looking for? Oh, there's, there's so many ways of doing that, Michaela. I think you, you, can, you can get involved in, you know, in, in local clubs or, 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 or societies at school, you know, any, any, sort of, any sort of associations, you know, you can, you, you know, there's, there's so many different things that you can do, whether it's, whether it's sports or, or anything else, but, but any sort of club or association. And, and just, and you know, look, look, just watch how other people behave, you know, look at the, the captain of the club or the, or the secretary of the club or the treasurer or, you know, any of these sorts of 
uh, you know, typical roles within these things. And particularly once you get to university, because there's so many different associations. But even in your local communities, there's, there's so many clubs that you can go to. And I think just watching how other people behave, watching how the, you know, those that are running the thing behave. And, 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 and if anyone's looking for volunteers to do things, do it, you know, just, just put your name forward. And, and, and I always use an expression that, you know, it's so better if somebody comes knocking on my door to say, I want to do something rather than me having to go out and trying to find somebody who's willing to do it. So if you're, if you're open and transparent about, you know, what, what sort of skills you need, then, then, and people come knocking on your door, I think learn those skills early, learn them in local associations where it's, it's easy to do that. Um, and, and those are really, really good skills that will continue all the way through your life. Okay. That's a very good advice. I think, especially around, you know, find volunteering jobs kind of come forward and just show your own initiative, I guess, is, is key to, to, to building those skills. So, so thank you for, for that, Ian. Um, there's another nice question around, um, in order to work in the engineering sector, what sort of degrees should one do preferably in brackets then if you're looking to work in trading? So in, so, and, and my extended question to that is, do you actually still need a degree or are there any other pathways now into engineering? So yeah, so what degrees, if you want to work in the engineering sector, um, more so if you want to work in trading and do you actually need degrees or are there any other pathways nowadays? There, there are other pathways. You, you, don't, you don't just need a degree. I mean, we, we, we take on graduates for sure from, from universities, but we also take on a lot of apprentices. And, and, and I can think of an apprentice that we have working with us now who came through the apprenticeship um, a, a route in, into the organization and a first class individual. And, and he's, he's now working his way through the organization. He's still, he's only been graduated for, from, from an apprentice point of view for three years now, but, but he's actually progressing very, very quickly up, up the ladder. And again, you know, I would say that people like that are, it's, it's their behavioral softer skills that, 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 that help everybody else choose somebody like that to do another job rather than simply because he's good at, at, at the engineering skills that, 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 that he had. In terms of trading, I mean, I mean, there's all sorts of ways, I think, to get into trading. It doesn't have to be through, through engineering. It could be through finance. It could be, it could be any, any, any sort of way. And I know traders who, who have come from very, very disparate backgrounds. Uh, and and, and the, there's no one way to get into trading. And it depend, depends what sort of trading you, you know, you're talking about, whether it's financial markets or commodities or, you know, or any of those sorts of things. So, the, you know, the world, is, um, uh, the world needs good skills. You know, as I say, you, you, you're a, a very valuable commodity. And, 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 and always remember that, you know, no matter what job you go for, you know, you're the valuable person. And I think organizations these days are much more attuned to that than they used to be. Um, there is another um, very interesting question, actually. So about your future vision. So where do you see, what kind of sort of engineering jobs do you see in 10 to 15 years? Oh, that's a really good question, that is. It's, <laughs> I wish I had a really good crystal ball and I'd be able to, to, to tell you. But I think, I think one of the things is, 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 is digital energy. I mean, it's, you know, you still have to, you know, there's still basic physics involved in moving energy around the place. But, but I think it's the way in which we use energy. So there's going to be so much more software, so much more that you can do from your smartphone that, that you would never dream of now. And I think, you know, it's, it's, there'll be a lot going on in the background, but all the things to do with artificial intelligence and automation systems and all these sorts of things, it is, it is going to be a truly, it is now, but it is going to be a significantly uh, different digital world in 10 to 15 years. And, and one of the challenges that organizations like, like ours have, where we do a lot of research and development, so there's a lot of engineering in, in that as well. But, but you look at the, the research and development that we need to do, we need to think ahead five or 10 or 15 years, what research do we need to do now that is going to then become a reality in five years time or 10 years time. And, and that's sometimes not easy to do. And if you do it on your own, you'll miss things. So you have to work with others to be able to come up with the right answers. Don't be too blinkered about these things. Keep your options open. Okay. So I think we will probably have 
time for one or max two questions, depending on, on the shortness of the answer. There's actually one um, question around, is it different um, to work for a Japanese company instead of a, uh, a UK company? And the answer is yes. Uh, why, why is it different? UK companies tend to be, um, their, their sort of horizon, their time horizon is quite sort of limited. You know, maybe look three months, six months, a year ahead. You know, Japanese culture, the Far East culture is completely different. They will look 10, 20, 30 years ahead. And, and for me, that, that's hugely positive because you, you, you know that, that, that they've got a very, very defined vision of what, of what they're going to do. And personally, I love that. I love that uh, way of thinking. Thank you. So very different. And I guess, you know, it, I, I think we will see differences in, in any cultural um, company. So whether they are German, whether they're Japanese, whether they are, whether they're British, but I think very insightful um, sharing. Thank you very much, Ian. And especially as, as our world becomes more and more of local, if that makes sense, globally local. Um, globally local, indeed. Lo globally local. So just last, but, but last question before I close the session. Um, so you talked about people and that, pe that you realized people became far more important to you. So what happened in your career? When did you realize that actually people management, helping people to develop is actually sits at your, at your heart rather than staying in the te very technical engineering bit? So wh when was that transition and what triggered that? It, it, it happened quite early on, I have to say. And, and it was probably uh, as I was, I was heading for my sort of first proper promotion where I had one person working for me. And, and, and two, two things happened. It was actually a mentor of mine saying, apply for the job. And my, my first response was, no, no, there's, there's other people out there who are more experienced than me. And he said, look, he's, Ian, apply for the job. So I did and I got it. And I realized then, just with one other person working with me, I, I, I had a responsibility that I didn't have before. Uh, and it was completely different. And I just, I thoroughly enjoyed it. it. It has its moments, I have to say. It has its difficulties, I have to say. But I love working with people. And, and for me now, you know, what, what is business if it's not about the people that you're working with? Wonderful. Ian, we haven't quite made it all for the questions, but thank you ever so much um, for everybody to, to ask all these questions. Um, I hope we've answered um, the questions we had the time to answer in quite comprehensively and it was a really nice insight into your life Ian thank you very much for taking the time today it was a pleasure to have you on the webinar today I wish you all the best have a lovely day and speak soon and thank you everyone for listening in we will be sending out a very quick survey and I would appreciate if you could um, answer that it will help us shape our webinars going forward so thank you ever so much and have a good day everyone goodbye Bye Thank from you. France. Bye. Bye.